Hey everyone, Eric from Teachers Talking Tech, and I'm here to talk to you about the new Seesaw Activities update. Seesaw just updated their activities a few days ago, and it is a huge update with lots of changes. So I'm going to try to go through this step by step. Just know that some things may look different depending on whether you're Seesaw for schools, which is the paid version, or whether you are free Seesaw. Okay, so let me just show you, there, there's small differences, but I just want you to know about them. So when I show you some of these, you'll know um, why yours may look different. So with the free account, you can create 100 activities, okay? Uh, you can also have two collections, and we'll get into what collections are, but it's a way to, add, to basically to organize your um, activities, okay? With Seesaw Plus, which is a paid version by Classroom, you can have 10 collections and 500 activities, okay? And then if you have Seesaw for Schools, you have unlimited uh, number of activities that you can create, um, and you also can have 100 collections, which should be plenty. Also, uh, if you have the paid versions, you can add scheduling your activities, so you can say, you know what, I only want this to go out to my students on Wednesday or things like that. And then you also have what we'll talk about a little bit, which is a school activity library. Okay, you don't have that with the free version. So now that you know that, let me get into what this looks like. You can see, first of all, if you've looked at activities before, that the interface looks totally different. Now, if you're not familiar with Seesaw activities, I would actually tell you to look on the Teachers Talking Tech channel and go back and I have a basics, uh, kind of a basic walkthrough of Seesaw activities. I would watch that first and then come back uh, and watch this, okay? Now, the interface, you can see, number one, you have what was very, uh, this was asked for by tons of people. Um, and people are saying we, we need to be able to search uh, to find activities so we don't have to scroll through uh, hundreds of activities. You can also see that you can look for activities by subject or by grade. Okay, now if I go all the way to the bottom, you can also do that by, uh, by browsing by subject. So I can click on drama or something else and just look for um, activities that meet that criteria, okay? Now, I'm in second grade right now, and so it's gonna show that um, these are the most recently added activities for second grade, all right? I can view more right here, but also there's gonna be some collections that Seesaw has curated, all right? You can see that these are probably changed as the year goes on, um, but these are just different collections they've made for you. Then down here, you can see there are collections that are for second grade that they've kind of curated and put out there that they think would be um, useful for you, okay? Now, hey, look at that, there's one of mine. So let's check it out. There's a couple things you can do when you find one that you are interested in. The first thing is, is you can just tap anywhere here in this post, okay? And you can view it. So you can see, all right, what is this all about, okay? Also, by clicking on the teacher's picture who shared that item, you can go and find out more about them. This is kind of neat. So when you click here, it'll take you to that teacher's homepage. Now you can see I only have one activity published. I need to get going and <laughs> do some more, but it'll tell you a little bit more about them. Um, it will tell you how many teachers have liked the activity and how many students uh, have seen the activity. I mean, how cool is that? All right. So let me go back again. Now the next thing I can do is I can click on the heart right here. And when I click on the heart, it'll allow me to add it to my personal classroom, okay? And within that, you can add to a collection in your personal classroom. So you can see I've created a bunch of different collections to help me organize my activities. Now again, this will look different depending on whether you have the paid version or the free version, okay? Now, another thing I can do when I click on this is you can see that in here, I have the option to share it, and then I have the three dots. So if you click on share, it'll ask you, who do you wanna share this with? And um, so like you can share it with your students right from here. So if you just wanna quickly share an activity, you can say, yep, share that with my students, and it will share it as is right away with your students. If you want to make changes to it, that's where these three dots come in. So you can see this is another way where you can add it to your collection. You can copy and edit the activity. So this is awesome. Most of these 
probably will not be ready to use for your students um, because you might want to use your own voice instructions uh, or make little changes. Once you click copy and edit, it will allow you to change the directions, the title, um, basically everything about it that you want to change to make it your own. Okay. All right. You can also delete the activity if you own it. If you don't own it, it will just say, do you want to remove this from your library? Okay. Pretty cool. Now, because this is mine, it says added activity. Let's go back and look at someone else's and let's see what it looks like if I don't own it. So let's see this one right here. So because I don't own this, you can see, I don't see the three dots. So I have to add this to my collection first. Let me do that. There we go. Now it's asking me, well, which collection do you want to add it to? So I can say, oh, I want to add it to holidays or whatever I want to do it. Okay. And now that I own this, I can make more changes. Here I go. So now you can see I've switched over to my personal library. Now in my personal library, I have things I've created and things that I have borrowed from other teachers. So let's take this one that I've just uh, that I've just borrowed. When I click on it, now that it's in my library, I have those options to go ahead and I can copy and edit it and make it my own. OK, I can also remove this from my library and that would be useful. Let's say if I copied and edited this after I copy and edit it, it's mine and I can save that in my uh, personal library. But maybe I want to return or remove this one that I had originally so I don't have two copies. I can also click add to collection. Maybe you want to change it to a different collection or add it to multiple collections. You can do that all right here. All right. So super useful. OK, so the other thing, if I go to my library, you can see it does not have the keyword search, but you can create a new activity and you can also um, go by subject. Now, when you create a new activity, if you share it in your library, it'll ask you, uh, is it math, reading, writing? So it'll add those tags within it. So let's take a look at this one. You can see that there's the tags right there. So it's saying English language arts, what grade? Um, different things like that, and it'll show where I have it. And if you have Seesaw for Schools, it'll show if you shared it to your school library. So now let's go through what it looks like and how it's changed when you create a new activity. Okay, so you see right here, it says create new activity. This looks pretty much the same. So let me just create a fake activity here. Okay, and I'm gonna skip all these parts here. Now down at the bottom, this used to be where you would share, publish, all these other things. But really all it has now is you can uh, add some notes. Um, like maybe you use this activity with a certain book or a worksheet. You can add those things um, and your students don't see it, but you do. Okay, and then you also can link this to certain skills. Uh, this would only be with the paid version down here. OK, so let's say I've created a new activity. I'm ready to share it. You can see that it just says save now. And this is because a lot of times teachers would create activities, but they didn't want to share it with their students right away. They weren't ready for that. So they click on save. And here's my activity. So now my activity is in my library. OK, so if I want to come back and share it next week or next month or next year, all set. OK, but I have the options. Uh, to share or to go back and edit this, delete it, copy and edit. So let me click share. Now, if you have multiple classes set up, you'll see all of them right here. So here we go. Here's my students. OK, and I'm all set and ready to share it. But you can see there's a couple options right here. This is an important one. And really, it's only useful if you have one to one devices. But I can edit students, which means, hey, I only want to share this activity with this group or that group or these certain students. Uh, I would edit them right here before I shared it. So really useful. Um, you can see, too, there's an option up here that says other teachers. OK, let me show you what that looks like. So if you want to share this activity with other teachers, OK, you click on, let's see, there's share to Seesaw Library. So this would be, hey, I've got a great activity that I think would be useful to, uh, to all teachers. If you click there and share it, it will send it to Seesaw and they'll look at it. And if they like it, they will add it to the activity library, the Seesaw library. So how cool is that? 
If you have the paid version of Seesaw, you can add to a school library. This is really useful because maybe all of your grade uh, is using something, you know, similar curriculum or whatever it may be. It's an easy way where one person makes the activities, but everybody can benefit from it. Okay. And then these, these down here were things that you could already do. Um, you know, sharing an activity link with others, uh, embedding in a website, things like that. Okay. So that's how you share these out. I would say overall, I love this update. I love the update because it's just so collaborative. And I like the teachers are really driving uh, Seesaw activities. So you know that the things in here are going to be made by other teachers in your grade. They're going to most likely be useful for what you are doing. And I love how it's easy to search and uh, by keyword or by subject or grade because now you can really narrow it down to what you're looking for. Uh, that and the collections in your library make it so much easier to find what you're looking for. So I love that too. All right. Well, I hope that you learned a lot. I know that was a lot of information, um, but it was a huge update. So I hope you enjoy it. I hope that you add some of your activities to this collection because the more teachers that, uh, that add things, the more useful it will become. All right, this was Eric from Teachers Talking Tech. See ya.